everyone welcome back for a little TLC so I've had a number of people who have like called me or messaged me about my thoughts regarding Roe versus Wade um, being overturned and so I'm gonna talk about that today for those who don't know I am a minister but I'm also a lawyer so um, rather than keep having all these individual conversations I kind of just wanted to put my thoughts in a video for you all to see and for me to be able to just send people when they ask me <laughs> my thoughts about this um, from both a Christian and a legal perspective. So today we're going to be talking about the overturning of, of Roe versus Wade and whether or not that is a win for Christianity um, or what have you. So let's get into it. <music> come right out and say like no I don't really think that this is a win for Christianity Roe v Wade being overturned um, because we have the potential for states to put into law something that will not allow people to make their own decisions regarding their themselves or for their families and um, that seems to be directly opposite to how our God our God who gives us free will, our God who presents opportunities to us, but then gives us the right to make our own decisions. It's opposite of how God operates. And so I can't really see how God is pleased with laws or us advocating for laws that don't allow people to make their own decisions. Like God doesn't even do that, force us to make certain decisions. And so why should we be advocating for a law or think it's a win to have laws that don't allow people to exercise their free will. Seems pretty <laughs> seems pretty simple to me and a little bit contradictory for us to really be celebrating something like that. Um, but, I mean, at this point, the law kind of is what it is or it could be what it's gonna be with however your individual state tends to decide. And so I did want to provide some tips for what can we do moving forward? Number one, like legally, I encourage people to either become a politician or pray for politicians who are in office or who are going to be running for office who will know how to enact laws that allow people to operate in the in the gray. Like very few things are actually black and white, especially legally. And so, and I think that we can acknowledge that there really is no one fits all approach to how we are living <laughs> in this world and so we really do need politicians who can allow people to operate in the gray um in the gray area and i also want to remind people that legally the american political system laws that we have democracy was not designed to protect christian principles um it's great when things shake out that way but we we can't just do everything based on Christian principles or declare like all the things that we're going to do are going to be based on Christian principles because we do have separation of church and state here. If you want more information about that, I did do a pretty extensive video on it when I first started, I think, but I'll put a link to that video here. But yeah, legally, we can just pray for our politicians that they will know how to enact these laws and be reminded that allowing people to choose giving people agency is very on point with how our God operates. Um, I think morally moving forward when it comes to Roe v. Wade being overturned, as a Christian, I'm going to talk a little bit about sexual immorality um, <clears throat> because I do think that people will have to be a lot more conscious, more strategic, and more careful when it comes to their sexual partners and what they are doing but if we think about it the laws really <laughs> don't have to dictate that for christians because we're supposed to exercise self-control in the area of sex anyway um so we already weren't supposed to be throwing the buns around i don't really know <laughs> we weren't supposed to be throwing the buns around before um this law was overturned and so exercise self-control um vet your partners pregnancy is something that can be the result of you having sex but so can 
STDs and all of those other types of things. And so you're going to have to be more careful. But I do recognize that everyone who is maybe exercising some of their rights to abortion or things of that nature weren't doing so because they were sexually irresponsible, but have other reasons for that. But I'm just saying for the sake of sexual morality, we're supposed to be practicing that anyway. And I encourage you for number three to trust God and walk with God in your own individual capacity um, and to pray for others and their relationships with God as well. I recognize that I am not an all-knowing being, but I trust that God, I trust the Holy Spirit to convict people if they need to be convicted. I don't know why certain people may need to have access to certain resources, but I trust that just like God speaks to me and convicts me and tells me what I need to be doing, God will do the same thing for those other pe- for those other people as well. And so I trust God to help us to all make the right decisions. And I don't think that I necessarily need laws, American laws, to, to do that. And so I encourage people that rather than advocating for laws that take away people's choices, trust that God will lead those folks in the way that they should go as they are submitted to him. Really, I think that at the end of the day, we're all supposed to be pointing people to Jesus so that we'll then have access to the Holy Spirit to make the right decisions for our family, to make the right decisions that will lead to the building of the kingdom. But that's not going to happen if we're forcing people to do things. And I think that God recognizes that. And that's why we have access to free will. So yeah, pray for your politicians. You exercise your own self-control. And then you allow God to complete the work that he has started in all of these people. And trust the decisions that they are making as they are led by God. I know this is a little, I don't know, I think it was like a little bit tight just because of of the topic and it's been very contentious, but I think that if we keep our eyes on God, I don't know, it's really just like not that deep. God allows us to make choices, so we should allow people to make choices as well. Um, I'd love to know what you all think about this. Do you think that Roe v. Wade being overturned is a win for Christianity? Um... I'd love to read your comments about why you do or why you don't. Um, Yeah, whether you agree with me or not, I still love you. (laughs) And I mean, I think the discourse is is healthy. Um, I do hope, yeah, I do hope that we can start to think about some of these things critically and with the mind of Christ and not with our just our own emotions or our opinions and especially things that are steeped in tradition but aren't necessarily steeped in scripture or the guidance of the holy spirit so yeah let me know what you all think about this i look forward to reading your comments oh i forgot um my church released a single called just for who you are and so yours truly is on the lead vocal so i love y'all to check that out i'll put a link to the song in this video so you can download it but yeah y'all have a wonderful week and i'll see you next time for a little tlc bye bye